That was because of the policy. GM is very strict about wanting to collect as soon as the cars are on the lot. They want their dealerships to pay them. Whereas Toyota gives the companies a chance to sell the car and that way they can make profit before they pay back the company. GM's policy is obviously a lot more uh, strict on the dealerships. It puts them on, gives them more of a burden because they're more at risk. Like if they can't sell the cars, they've already paid for them. Whereas Toyota doesn't run into that as much because they have a chance to sell the cars. They're fixed and total asset turnover. GM's doing slightly better, but a lot of that is based on their pricing strategy. If you have lower prices, you're going to sell more, but then you'll have more cost of goods sold. So what will end up happening is your asset turnover has a, a indirect or a negative correlation with your gross margin, which we'll see here in a minute. For profitability, this is the biggest thing. Toyota's net income in 2007 was 14 billion. GM had a net loss of 38 billion, which sort of throws all the ratios out the window. That sort of says it all. Obviously, gross margin, profit margin, ROA, ROE, all of the profitability ratios are going to favor Toyota. So those aren't really that telling. Like I was saying about the gross margin, um, Toyota's it was about 20%, whereas GM's was about 7%, and that's also based on their pricing strategy. They're trying to sell more, so their cost of goods sold is higher. And then the other uh, profitability ratio that I looked at was book value per common share. This one was kind of interesting because GM's ratio was negative 65. There's, uh, or their book value is about negative 65 dollars per common share, whereas Toyota's is about 1,400. So you can see the obvious difference there and how Toyota's doing a lot better. For the solvency, which is your long-term ability to pay off your debts, <coughs> Toyota's financed about two-thirds by debt. So as we saw their, or their times of 